From tradition to innovation, from colonial to contemporary, art historian Richard Love and his guests bring you the world of art on American Art Forum. My second guest, Catherine Flynn and Greg Hornbeck, left the stability, as we say, of commercial art to devote all their energy to the creation of what we say is high art. So calling themselves two dogs in company, Catherine and Greg are visual communicators. As a matter of fact, is that anything different from what any artist is? They live and work in Dallas, Texas. Catherine's works are both bright and bold and abstract figure compositions as well as sculpture of a kind of a folk art nature. We'll talk about that. Greg constructs three-dimensional works combining anthropomorphic images with symbols and dreamlike forms. That's, that's interesting too. Both artists though have exhibited in the Dallas area and Greg recently had a solo show at the Plaza of the Americas in Dallas. Catherine and Greg, welcome to American Art Forum. Thanks. Well, Pleasure to be here. Here you are in Chicago, and we're talking about Dallas, but Dallas really has been a kind of a, a kickoff point for your for your latest art, hasn't it? We're going to go into that right away. Um, how would you say uh, the future looks in terms of Dallas? You going to stay in Dallas? What what are your ideas? Uh, uh, where do you where do you where are you going? Where are you headed? I think Dallas. It's been stable for us, and we've both you know been able to work and create there. Uh, and we're looking forward, you know, to reach out to other markets, hopefully. But we still like Dallas. It's still a relatively small town, and, and it's a nice place to live. And we have been able to produce. Speaking of small towns, you're from a small town to begin with, really, aren't you, Greg? Sure. You know, we're both from northern Indiana. Where, where are you from? Town. You're from Lafayette. I was born in Lafayette. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a town called Monticello, which yeah. is 5,000, kind right. of a resort area. Well, I know where that is. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you went to school where? Purdue University. Yeah, and did you, uh, were you working on an art degree there? I started out in political science. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a lawyer. I thought there would be a little more money into it, but I couldn't keep my hands off the canvas. So I, it, I gravitated into commercial art design and fine arts. Art was pecking away at your brain and your well, heart from the time it, you were it, a it, kid. It, yeah, it always yeah. has. You yeah. know, more heart than brain at, at times. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> pocket books. Well, that happens to everybody. <laughs> well, that's all right. Katie, it's better to call you Katie than Kathy. That's fine. Um, you too. You're you're from Indiana. Right. Where? I grew up in a little town called Fowler. Fowler, that's just uh, north of Lafayette and south of Crown Point and right. places like that. Right. right, very small town, very rural, yeah. Um, agricultural. Yeah, corn and beans and wheat, right? And <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, how do you get from corn and beans and wheat in Fowler, Indiana, to Dallas making art? I mean, there's many steps in between. How'd that happen? Um, Don't shake you know, your head. Well, there's got to be a way. Well, the, the small town. You, you know, when you were when you were born in the small towns in the fifties, there were, you couldn't stay there really. So you, well, I guess I've been kind of a nomad, and essentially, I went to school in Bloomington at Indiana University, and then moved in south. I began my studies in art mm -hmm. and uh, finished with a degree in sociology. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wandered south pretty much, off to Georgia, and I spent time in the mountains in Georgia painting. Painting by yourself? Well, with some other people. There were a lot of people. There. You were absorbing nature? In the nature. early 70s, I was meeting a lot of craftsmen, woodworkers, mm -hmm. people like that, and sketching a lot of the people I met. But you were painting, mostly. I was painting and drawing. And you were painting portraits and other realistic type subject matter. Right. But you've since grad graduated from that or evolved to other kinds of work. Right. It's a good abstract. way to learn, I think. Yeah. Well, I think so, too. You have to start out with the skeleton before you can paint the form. Uh, but let's show our, our viewers a little something. Uh, let's start out. Um, let's see. All right. Well, we'll start out with Katie's work first. This is nesting. Tell us about this, Katie. Um, it's a large painting. Yeah, it's with, 46 by 54 I inches. I mean, to me, it's a large painting. Most yeah. of my paintings are relatively small because I would rather paint a lot than... <laughs> and references to nature here. A lot of references to nature. Um, some yep. of the symbols came out of earlier sketches. I have a lot of sketches on painted, what I would call sketches, but they're little paintings on paper. And that twig kind of form is, right. I use that kind of often. I don't know. That's a, just a little life thing and a nature thing more than a. But when we get to Greg's work, we're going to see a, a greater reference to figurative <coughs> work, stuff. But before we do, let's, let's look at another one uh, by uh, which you have created, uh, Katie, called Transmuting. 
uh, in this case, uh, 30 by 37 inches, not quite so big, but more of a, an org, far more of an organic shape. Much more minimal, I think. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Let's go to another one called centaurs. These are my little figures. What do you mean little figures? They're, they're, they're a dozen inches tall or so. Right. Yeah, about a um, foot tall. They came out of a series of small figures that were initially started because I ran out of materials. <laughs> At and I still honest. had, well, I still had pieces of linen left, and I just began working those figures. And from the plant, from the plain human figures, they moved into these um, more animal forms. Well, they're 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 certainly within the mainstream of what's going on in art today. We're going to show another slide, uh, which is the Plaza of the Americas Atrium. And the reason we're showing this to our viewers is that you had a show there, didn't you, Greg? Yeah, and it was uh, most of your recent work was shown there. Yeah, Don Nelson, who who runs the gallery for the plaza, and it's basically not a commercial gallery. It's just done for the public and and the people that are in the Plaza of the Americas, kind of a community uh, Consciousness, service. Yeah. yeah, and he was real uh, supportive of my work and he gave me the opportunity to have my first uh, solo exhibit there. So he looked at, at, at Greg Hornbeck's work and said, I like this work and I want to see it in Plaza of the Americas. We, we had a group show previously with, uh, with three other people mm -hmm. and he saw my work. Well, why, why don't we take a look at uh, what we're, we're going to show the next slide, which is the Hornbeck installation, your, your installation. Um, I'm having difficulty understanding exactly how this is. Can you explain this a little bit? Well, there are, actually there's a big atrium mm -hmm. and there's a skating ring in the center of this atrium and while you're seeing there's uh, catwalks that crisscross. It's kind of this. a handrail. We're right, at, so right we're standing on one of these catwalks looking into the gallery space. Mm -hmm. Why don't we look at, an, at another uh, slide showing uh, a work called Rainmaker and Chihawa. No, no, pronounce that for me. Okay, these three paintings in the center one is called the Rainmaker and it's basically uh, a cow skull with a guitar. Uh, it floats off a base and has an umbrella in the background. The one on the right is called Eve, and it's an anthrop kind of anthropomorphic type of figure, and a tribal in nature. And on the right is uh, a large painting that's called Maitre d'. A chair floats out of it. It's a tambourine. And there's use of a lot of uh, skeletal work. Greg, is it, is it a painting or is it sculpture? Well, hanging on the wall, you can't get around it. So what is it? I would consider the one in the center a sculpture. It's polychrome sculpture. It is. No. <laughs> it, it is and it isn't. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've had a strange blend. I need that, that tactile involvement working with these pieces. I need to build and I enjoy to building, but I also equally love to paint. So. Well, you know, a lot of that's going on in America today. When you think of Judy Foth and, and many other people, uh, we, we see that complex bas relief and almost a, almost a construction-like quality, yet, and, and always polychromed and brightly colored, sometimes acid colors, uh, even day glow colors, and so on and so forth. But yours seems to, to grow out of itself instead of bolt on, bolted on just segments, found art, bolted on one piece onto another. Well, to create a comp, yours seems to evolve from the inside dimensional yeah. uh, realm and until it's finished. I think it's, it, I've always been interested in primitive art. And those tribal mask uh, pieces that they actually wore or things uh, incorporated that type of usefulness. I mean, I just... Well, do you count that as, a, as an influence then in your art? Oh, sure. Oh, I mean, that's, that's good. You're, yeah. not, you're not saying, oh, no, 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 this is all strictly oh, Midwestern no. oh, or, no, or no. from Dallas. I mean, there's scenes in movies that I've seen that some of the, the, the wardrobing of primitive tribes just intrigue me. I mean, there's all types of, of primitive art. Let's that, put on another, uh, another one and take a look. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think this is a fascinating rainmaker. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of ironic. Here's here's uh, uh, the rainmaker's there, but shielding mm -hmm. itself from the rain. Mm -hmm. uh, a piece of sculpture. To, how does it stand? Uh, is it freestanding? Well, it is. Like I said, it's on a it's on a square pedestal, and it floats from one leg. The other three legs float off of it. So well, it's, one leg supports the piece. We'll basically. look at a detail of this in the next <coughs> slide right now. We have, believe it or not, a very short time. I, yes, mm -hmm. this is a detail of it, isn't okay, it? Okay, that's yeah. that's basically the mm -hmm. you know the skull and the painted skull. Most of my work's pretty 
I would consider brightly colored, and it, and it softens kind of the imagery of, of the bones. That this I, is the next one is Kihaho uh, Express. Am I pronouncing that yeah. properly? This is Eve. Oh, uh, I see. Chihuahua yes, Express Ch is, I don't know if you have a slide oh, on it, but it's yes. a tricycle piece. I see. Mm -hmm. this, this is Eve, and it's like I said, you can see the feathering type of things. And it's basically from that tribal kind of admiration. And it's, it's Eve, obviously, there's the snake and the hand, and the hand holds dir a symbolic apple. And directly right? related to Chihuahua uh, rites and figural uh, constructions you've seen in other primitive art. Is that sure. right? Yeah. I mean, All right, and let's look at one more before we, we have to end this fascinating discussion, all, uh, unfortunately. And this is, what is this one, Greg? Okay, that, that's the close-up of, the detail. Uh, of uh, mm -hmm. Eve. Yeah. Fascinating movement of, of forms and planes. Now, in this case, uh, while there is the plasticity uh, with the object, there's also almost a painted relationship between the plasticity of the sculpture and the image that we see, especially, seems to reverberate that in television, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's the basic thing I've been after, is trying to combine strongly both elements and now, doing it, you know, and in great integrate it where it does work as a unit. Greg, how old are you? 37. All right, you're, you're on your way, you're doing very well, in my opinion, you, you've got nowhere to go but up. In consideration of that, you'll probably move on toward the direction of New York and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. and, and uh, with the help of luck and a lot of entrepreneurship on your, mm -hmm. on your side, uh, I think we'll see more of you, but in the meantime, uh, as both of you work together, is there a togetherness? You've got to sure. tell me real quick. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> this development of your imagery, even though yours, each of it is very different. It's been especially important to me to distance myself from his work because mm -hmm. his work is so strong that I feel like I've tried to push mine almost more in, in everything that would be a woman's idea. Yep. Sounds good. Unfortunately, we're done. <laughs> we're, we're, it's all gone. Yeah. Well, in any case, uh, I'm, I'm glad you had an opportunity to meet uh, my guests tonight, Katie Flynn and Greg Hornback, and I hope you'll return again next week on American Art Forum. I'm Richard Love, inviting you then. Until then, have a great week. See you.